Dear Harstum, I recently discovered a fact that buffed mini Ultralisk is actually quite imba. Reduced size while splash damage remains the same makes engagement that used to only fit 2 or 3 Ultralisks are now have 5 or 6 Ultralisks attacking at the same time. Double splash damage! Can you even imagine if same changes applies to Archon? Question mark. My opponent used a quite interesting 12 pool opening that caught me off guard. But I defended without taking too many losses. Then my opponent decided to go for fast muta, which I always struggle to deal with, and losses half of my army at third bases, but I managed to survive through it. I attacked my opponent when 2-2 finished, a classic timing attack against Mesmira, and I indeed made some progress, inflicting heavy losses on my opponent. However, I pushed too slow and my opponent managed to make transition into Ultralisk. That's where everything went downhill. Here's the thing. I don't think my opponent played better than me. Yes, I do make awful splits and don't know how to deal with Mutalisk harassment, but to a race that only knows how to A-click slash move, constantly floating thousands of minerals in bank, can make 16 workers at the same time, never needs to worry about supply block and walling, using Queen to defend everything. Isn't it too much to having this Ultralisk buff? So the question here is, is the Ultralisk Imba? Or do I suck? And that's what we're here to find out. Uh, the name is for Zichtig from North America, a diamond player at 3.6k MMR. Is the Ultra Imba? Or does he suck? Let's find out together. All right, here we go in Neo Humanity here, a ZVT, opening up with a 12 pool that get built at 13 supply. So the first small discrepancy between what was written in the IOTIS form and what's actually happening. But 13 pool, 12 pool, who really knows the difference, am I right? Only absolute nerds who study the game all day, and that's definitely not me. I completely understand that the, the 13, 12 supply thing, you know, it messes with you. It's a barcode jerk, by the way, which is interesting because we're playing at 3.5k MMR. Like, who are you hiding from, my friend? I like, <laughs> don't think anyone is going to be stealing your strategies. But, ooh, actually, a 13, 13, this is a build order. Oi, 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 oi. Oh, I love this one so much. I believe you can actually play it with a 14, 14 as well. It's it's close enough. This is this is a very high level mind game for this level. That's so cool. So what will happen here is that if the Terran SEV scouts, this hatchery will finish at the same timing as when it's supposed to finish, which with a hatch first. And most Terran players, when they SEV scout, they only scout the natural and don't go into the main. So the Terran will be completely unaware of the fact that there's links out on the map. And despite SCV scouting, will actually get a couple of links in his face and not have the Reaper at home. That is the that is the goal of this build order, at least. And there's an actual SCV scout. So this is pretty much the, the dream scenario here. Oh my god, where's this guy going? He's on a freaking world tour. Bam, 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 bam. There's Paris over here. Berlin. This is Belgium. So I assume he's going to be going over here. Ah, Belgium moved. It's over here now. This is the Netherlands. Oh, look at him. Links want to stand there for a little while, perhaps. Wait until the Reaper's gone past. Yeah, having a great time in the Netherlands. Come visit, guys. Oh, it's great. Yeah, don't go to Belgium. That sucks. Um, so, Pooh is out. Uh, Extractor also gets constructed here. And the Reaper makes his way across the map. Over. Look at this. It's a magnet. It's a magnet. It's going to pull the Marine out of position. First position. First, first, first person view. First person view, ba -ba -ba, Reaper, there's a queen there, that's weird, that's too early. Oh, my marine died, oh, it's six links. Loses the marine, loses the SCV. Not a great start. Not a great start quite yet. Reactor, probably is going to fall as well. CC actually in some significant trouble here. SCV now being attacked. As uh, the links made their way into the main base. This, this CC almost just dies, which is kind of crazy in my mind. Okay, this Reaper just popping around, having a blast. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. On, now, I, I am not entirely sure if I 
if I would agree here with what's written on the form, okay? He's lost three workers, ran around with six, seven SEVs, lost the reactor, instead went for a tech lab on this, delayed his command center building by like, I don't know, like 45 seconds, now builds a bunker as a response. What did my man write on the form again? I defend it without taking too many losses. It's an optimistic way of writing about what happened or judging your situation. A good salesman, for sure. A good salesman. Reminds me a little bit of my, uh, my, my, my old landlord. When I told my old landlord that we had a, a hole in the roof the size of a, a large fist. The fist of a, of a giant. And that it rained inside every time rain came out of the sky. Um, my, my landlord told me that a lot of people like falling asleep to the sounds of rain hitting something. So he considered it a feature. And uh, now that I mentioned it, actually wanted to raise the rent. Now, that ended up being illegal. But that didn't stop him from trying to sell it to me. It feels like you also tried to sell a, an illusion to me here. Because this wasn't a very good start for you at all. You lost a lot of mining time. You lost three workers. You completely fell for the trick, which is a very good trick, by the way. So I'm not going to blame you for it. But if you fall for a good trick, don't pretend that you didn't fall for it. Like, it, it doesn't work. Like, you can't go to a magician show and then, despite not having any clue how any of these tricks went, you just go, there's a mirror in there somewhere. Just, this has to be mirrors. It's, just, it's all mirrors and smoke. I know, I know their tricks. These guys can't fool me anymore. Like, while you're screaming, your watch is gone. If you lost your wallet, and the magician is, you know, dangling it above your head. They, they, you just got tricked. It's okay to get tricked in StarCraft 2. It's a, it's a tricky game, you know? He, this guy played a fantastic build order, this, this barcode Zerg player. Just just be honest about it, okay? We're, we're, I'm not going to flame you. It's, it's not what I do at all here. And here for constructive criticism uh, through the power of analogies. And to end up killing a couple of overlords. I like that a lot. Flying around with your little Viking, floating a little bit of money, forgetting to build your third CC, you know, getting three barracks before your third CC, all of these things not being very standard. Uh, executing a build order that makes absolutely no sense. Yeah, that is that is key. That is key. That is absolutely key. Look at this. My man rushed out Stim and Combat Shield so that his three Marines in this bunker are a little bit extra tankiness once the Roach Rush arrives, or if they try moving across the map with the three Hellions and one Reaper that our Terran player, Vorsichtig! has uh, 5 minutes and 45 seconds into the game. Vorsichtig means uh, careful in German, I believe. Well, I know it's German, and I think it means careful. And this guy does play very careful. He's, uh, he's someone that's keeping all of his money under his mattress. You know, he just uh, doesn't trust any of the, the, the banks. He's saying, uh, the banks don't trust the government. Everything in gold, he buries it under his mattress. Some people, they dig a hole, but this guy, he dug a hole under his mattress. Cover that hole with another mattress. He sleeps on two mattresses as a result. That's crazy. This is just what I've heard, though. These are the rumors on the street. Can't actually confirm them. Um, <laughs> so we, we do have a Muta rush. That part was uh, fairly accurate. This is, a f this is a fast build. My man barcode over here. What is this? Opens up with a freaking 13-13. Follows it up with a Muta rush. In which the mutas are gonna pop at the seven minute mark after a 13 13. That is actually kind of impressive. Like, I'm. I'm genuinely impressed. And it doesn't happen often when I'm watching diamond level games. This looks good. Like, it actually. It looks like a cool build order. Yes, the macro isn't completely accurate, but the creep spread is fairly good. Um. Yeah, I. I, I I'm loving the way the Zerg is playing. Am I loving the way that the Terran is playing so far? Well. Not entirely. We're seven minutes into the game after, according to him, a pretty much perfect start. Right now we have six marines with stim and combat though. Two tanks, three hellions, a reaper and two medevacs. Which is fairly little for a, a flawless early game. I know people that are practically maxed out at this point. And have managed to deal damage with their first few units as well. Because so far... Well, we haven't had a whole lot of harassment yet. Ten links and two overlords have gone. Now, where did the Viking go? I'm still around. She's chilling. Chilling near the creep. Being intimidating nearby. <coughs> okay, the Muda's come in. Let's take a look at the response here. Out of Forsichti. Uh, Fox his Marines to the third base in anticipation of the Muda's killing all of his units. 
Oh. Oh. Pushes the Muras away. Forgets to look at his own army, though. That's very unfortunate. I don't think you can complain about A-clicking. Or A-moving. If all you did so far is A-move to the Muras. While losing your entire army at your third base against slow banelings off creep. But, then again. I'm not an expert on what you're allowed to complain about. You're, technically, you're allowed to complain about everything. Technically, yeah. Thor is on the way. We have Drilling Claws as well coming in. Second Factory is out. The funny thing here is, is that... The, the way that the Terran is building is actually correct as well, right? Five barracks, double factory, two eBays. You got your armory going and everything. So, like, the, 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 the flow of building is, is accurate. But the execution isn't quite accurate yet. There's now double EVOs on the way. That's very late here. So upgrades are going to be a very, well play a, a fairly big role. They would play, play an even bigger role if the Terran had remembered to start his 2-2 when the armory finished. Uh, I guess there's not really a lot of gas available either. Because he lost his refinery. He's only mining with 2 in this gas. He's technically mining of like 2.5 gas at this point. Zerg just continues expanding. Now, theoretically, this game is completely over. But I've, I've, I've learned... I've learned over the past few years that even in, in, in Diamond, anything can happen. Okay, like this is this is the Wild West of StarCraft, except even wilder than the Wild West. This is a... Uh, the, the Wild West wasn't actually that wild. It was terrible to live in, probably. But also, you know what I learned about the Wild West the other day, by the way? Oh, all that thought. Here's a right-click the CC. That is a sign of disrespect, I think. It's like he doesn't believe his opponent can pull the SCVs quick enough. He's just gonna right click the SCV with. Or the right click the CC with, with Muras. What's this? The CC's been floating. Where's this guy been going? I feel like I've seen him fly around this entire time as well. Okay, now it's gonna land. Let me tell you though about the Wild West. I thought that dueling was very common in the Wild West. But then I read that. Actual duels, like when the, the clock hits 12, you shoot each other, weren't so common. And whenever you had a, you know, a fight with someone, you just lure them out and then you'd, pew, you'd shoot them when, like in their back when they weren't paying attention. That was a way more common approach, obviously, because it was much safer if you wanted to, you know, put a hit out on someone like that rather than challenging them to a, a proper duel. Yes, yeah, so that was interesting. 2-2 um, two -two is now on the way. We have 2,900 minerals here as the income for the Zerg. We have 2,800 as well here for the Terran, despite him being on 46 workers. That is quite interesting. Perhaps it's something to do with these bad boys that work real hard. The mules, of course. Two more getting thrown down. Man, how many mules did we have saved up? How many SEVs can we queue up as well? Look at that. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. No, so we had three building and then six queued up. Very cool usually a bad sign if you're muling very hard and you're only barely outmining your opponent um <laughs> like 12 mules on the map nine yeah it's not great 4cc is coming out uh 16 oh this is the moment this is the moment so he did look into the replay because i think he specifically mentioned 16 drones being built at a time that must have really bothered him that must have really bothered him. The 60, the 16 drones. It was 92 workers against 53. I've been macroing perfectly. I hardly lost any workers so far. Only 26. Well, that doesn't quite fit my narrative, but you know what I mean. Rah! Uh, three more barracks coming out. We have turrets everywhere. There hasn't been any muta harass in the past 10 minutes. Absolutely no muta harass at all. Now... The, the one thing, okay, the one thing I kind of want to give to Voorzichtig is the fact that the, the the money has been fairly high for the Zerg player. Okay, there's been there's been a lot of cash in the bank this entire time. And you could say that is poor macro, but on the other hand, it is not completely fair. Okay, because the Zerg player has been mining 34, 3500 minerals this entire time. While Voorzichtig has been barely scratching the surface of 2k, sometimes only being like 1.5k. This is really... It, it, this is like the guys on Twitter. You know, the, the, the Twitter heroes telling Elon Musk how to, to manage the company. Because, you know, they're, they're also managers. They, they walk the dog twice a day and they cook the meal using HelloFresh the other day. So running a household is basically like, like, like managing a company as well. So they know a lot. It's like, 
well sure what's happening isn't perfect but i'm not quite sure if this dog walker is gonna do much better this was a good fight by the way this is a really good fight for the terran holy ever living crap that was a very good fight wow okay so we win well it's not quite a win but that was fairly insane 2-2 Two -two upgrades really helping out here as well against the 1-1 one -one units the mines doing damage like half of that fight was off creep that was a legitimately terrible engagement we can't say that there's no more banes in the comp these mutas are just, just kind of idling for now i guess Okay, they're coming in at this point. They do have plus two upgrades. There's three Vipers as well. Where did these guys come from? Just having a blast. Like, you can't fight this with, with Muras. It's not possible. Muras don't actually deal damage. Like, you need links or Banes in front so that the Marines need to run. This was an insane fight. There's still 16 Larva, but I'm actually starting to believe this was, this was world's worst engagement in the world. This was actually really, really bad. And now it's kind of over. 2-2, two, two, what is it? It's going to be 3-3 three, three against 2-2. Two, two, or 3-2 two, two against 2-2. Two, two. There are six Ultralis. Is there Chitinous Plating? There's no Chitinous Plating yet. Are the Marauders out? There's 11 Marauders on the map. Army supplies, 103 against 88. I love this. Look at this. Look, look at the situation that we're at right now, okay? We have five links, seven Muras, three Vipers, six Queens. Against 38 Marines, 11 Marauders, seven Medivex, five Mines. The priority here... With a, an army, an army advantage of like a freaking 40, because like there's there's a lot still, you know, in, in production, so we don't count that, is to take out this extractor. To take out this extractor of the seventh base of the Zerg, or the sixth base. I don't even know how many bases the Zerg has. I can't count properly. It's like, this is obviously not going to be our priority. Our priority is going to be to, to clean up a base or something, or to scout what our opponent is doing, or just kill completely destroy our opponent like if, if we had stimmed in here 15 seconds ago i'm pretty sure you would have cleared every single overlord here and every single drone and this game would now officially be over now with these six ultras popping out in the near future is there still a possibility that this goes wrong no i don't think so there's no chitinous plating yet the the plus three has finished as well so marauder should absolutely be destroying this that was not the greatest bit of control there. Um, all right. Well, the good news is, is that so far the Ultra hasn't done a whole lot yet. Uh, all of the damage really has been inflicted by the Banelings. On top of that, these smaller Ultras probably would have done the same amount of damage if they were the bigger Ultras, because, well, you don't kite at all. You just stand still and you let yourself get surrounded from basically a full well 360 or whatever i can't really i don't know the, the side angles are kind of being covered yeah 280 280 degree angle you got covered it's a nice little surround there yeah, mutas are gonna end up dying you did lose your momentum a little bit don't forget your opponent had a bank um that was that was fairly fairly big you know this is this is not a bank that's going to go bankrupt anytime soon at least i hope not um they have a lot of cash in there 199 out of 200. 11 more drones. This guy's a macro machine. Five more queens. Also, also, why did you complain in the early game about queens? You hardly harassed. I completely forgot about this part. I was I was so busy with with, with being confused is that I forgot to mention that you're you built three Hellions, a Reaper and a Viking, and you killed two overlords. Like that's pretty much what you're like. What do you expect from these fights, you know? Like, I don't quite get it. It's an interesting fight as well, by the way. It's going to be partially of creep. This guy has, can use spellcasters. That is wild and diamond. This guy can't split. Does boost all of his medifacts away after the one medifact that was parasitic bomb died. Here comes the next parasitic. Boom! Just want to look at this. I think it's the most important. Boom. No more medifacts remaining. Half the army gets thrown away for free as well. We get another stim still a pretty decent engagement for the Terran given everything that has happened like just look at the just just think about what this fight really was like what was this fight the Terran was up two upgrades had a pure bio army a tier one army fighting against a zerg that was using spellcasters ultras a freaking tier five unit 
with with the chitinous plating upgrade and had banelings and there were no splits no micro and there was more supply as well for the zerg and yet the terran walks away with a part of his army what more do you want here like your opponent is out teching you out supplying you out ecoing you do do you feel like you deserve the win in these fights because you press the stim button or because you borrowed the mines all at the exact same spot i don't quite understand you say your opponent is just a moving a clicking but i literally haven't seen a single split yet this entire time you didn't pull away the damaged medevac that got parasitic bombed you don't dare building ghosts because they're so difficult to control like you you haven't used anything that doesn't require a move legitimately nothing not one thing how can you complain about the other guy a moving if it's all you do as well you even mention in your in your form that the splits weren't great or they weren't brilliant or whatever it is that you say like how is this game still even despite your opponent constantly being up five bases the creature threat isn't brilliant anymore and the fights actually have been really bad as well out of the zerg this is a huge army now out of terran uh, consisting of 26 marauders 32 marines and six mines as well as six medevacs two medevacs completely empty so make that four medevacs oh cheeky little pickup here love to see it here comes an attack again i do not trust this zerg to make good and take good engagement i really do not oh god here come the mines. It's actually... Whoa! <laughs> what? You can't complain. If this is how you move your units, there's no way, dude. Okay, I want to show this again. What was that move? Okay, I don't mind the not splitting, but this? This is really pushing it. L look at what this army does, okay? L look, this, this army. I want to see this. Oh, I need to run away from the Ultras and the Banes. I think there was like mines in there as well that weren't burrowed. Hey, this is this is some absolutely low tier micro. Like, there's literally not a single split that has happened this game. Nice pickup as well. Clean and smooth. <laughs> it's like the... <laughs> Wasn't there a lady a while back that they picked up with like a with a helicopter she just kept spinning at like high speed like, it's like that's just what happened to these marauders as well they're like oh, we're being picked up we're being saved like, blasted by banelings the medevacs are just going back and forth it's the saddest little thing yeah there's no right now, now this game is truly over i mean uh, the ultras are in are out still the, you're gonna get more banelings there's no more eco at all to, to do anything. And Zerg just continues to expand. I mean, Zerg, Zerg is just so much better here. Like this this Zerg has actually been been much superior in this in in this game. Like I'm if this Zerg knew how to engage even just a little bit, like how to, to micro banelings, I think this Zerg would be legitimately a thousand MMR higher. Like 900, 800 MMR higher. Like the skill the skill difference in this game has been so large, it's actually painful to see. Like, this is legitimately, like, it's just so much better. Like, build order-wise, like, thinking-wise, there's actually some cute things he was doing. Uh, honestly, the fact that he's using Vipers, understanding what unit comps to get. Like, the Muta Harass was kind of cute, I guess, as well. It's just... The inability to fight properly is really ruining the Zerg's MMR. So if you're watching this barcode Zerg player around 3.6, 3.7k MMR on the North American ladder, please look at some replays. Um, move command the banelings this is a quick tip. Don't A move them. You move command them because then when they dial, they'll explode. So you don't, you know, they tank a little bit more damage as well. It's really, really important. Uh, it, this is going to improve your game massively. Yeah, GG. I, I actually don't know what to say. You, you literally, you complain about the A-clicking, the A-moving. It's all you do. You don't micro at all. Your build order was kind of balls. Your response was kind of balls. Your follow-ups were kind of balls. You managed to win a fight here, which never should have happened. Like, funnily enough, moving out there in any situation, and in a situation in which the Zerg knew how to fight, would have been a very bad call because you would have lost that fight after that early game. So you made the wrong decisions, but they worked out. 
but they shouldn't have. So even your decision making was off. Even when you did things correctly, it was because you did them incorrectly. Or when things went correctly, they went correctly because you were making mistakes. Like you shouldn't have never been there. Like if that Zerg had any clue on how to engage, you would have been super dead in that massive fight. Like I, I don't know. Like I, I, I look at a game like this and I think to myself, you either Terrans are truly deranged as just a species, or this is this is like I'm being I'm being clowned on. You know, I I don't think this is legit. I I, I don't think the form is legit. I don't believe that you can watch this replay and your takeaway is is that is 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 that Zerg is imbalanced. And specifically the Ultra, it was the banelings that killed you. Against the Ultra you could move your entire army in a huge clump, which is what you want to do, and just stutter that. But I mean this is just p poor analysis, um of all went wrong. Just, literally everything is incorrect. And the Zerg did a lot correct except the fighting. So yeah, that, then you lose. And you still almost managed to win. Like, I I don't know. To me, this is simple, my friend. Ultras aren't imbalanced, but it is you who sucks. And please don't ride me again. That's going to be it for me today. Thanks all so much for watching. Hope you did enjoy this. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. And I'll see all of you next time for a new video. Adieu.